I've been on the Education Committee ever since I've been in the Arkansas Senate, and this is beginning my ninth year, so uh, it's been a while, and I served on it in the House as well before I became a member of the Senate. So, As Chairman of the Education Committee, you would know better than anybody what the major issues are. Are there any big issues besides staying out of court? Well, that, I think by and large the, the main thing that we've tried to do this session uh, is to do just that very thing, to keep ourselves out of court. We have uh, been very fortunate over the last few years to have had strong leadership in the education arena, and most of the heavy lifting was done at that point in time that did get us out of court. So uh, we've made very sure and certain that we've done nothing this time that would uh, even come close to getting us back involved in, a, in litigation and uh, court uh, proceedings. Uh, we've had a few issues that came through that had that potential and we've dealt with them. And, and The school choice bill, is that one of them? Well, we, we've uh, looked at that the entire session. We've uh, tried to work some things out. We still never were able to come to a consensus on that issue this, this year. And uh, the Attorney General and I had a conversation uh, at the end of last week, or the first of this week, rather, uh, to the effect that we uh, are going to uh, try to put together a study group this summer, uh, an independent group of senators and House members and the Governor's office and the Attorney General's office, uh, and interested parties to try to come up with a consensus bill that uh, we can live with. We know that the only thing that really is, is Pressing us currently on that forefront is the uh, Malvern School. At, at the very least, if we come up with something this summer, then we could come back next year during the uh, fiscal session. I'm sure we can get an extraordinary vote to put that on the uh, agenda if uh, we have to, uh, and and deal with it at that point in time. But uh, we've worked hard all this session, and still we're not able to bring all the parties to an agreement on what we need to do. Uh, the Attorney General's office has more or less volunteered to take the lead in trying to help us get and guide us through the formulation of something that would be constitutional and stand up in court and give us some guidance. Our main objective, I think the general will of the General Assembly is, is that we do not want to open this up to free choice mm -hmm. completely, but yet at the same time still have us. What can you tell your superintendents back home about funding, how much they can expect to get out of this session? I think that they are uh, fairly sure that, that we're not going to do anything any different than what the governor proposed in his balanced budget uh, to us back uh, when the session started. Uh, we, we're not going to be budget busters and, and try to come up with something that we'd have to come back and undo everything. So I think what the governor proposed is what we'll go with, which would increase, have a small increase in funding on a per student basis. How about the teachers in getting the some help The teacher insurance issue is a, is a separate thing, but it's still uh, very much, uh, I think at this point, it's still very much a lot. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a very uh, tough thing to, to actually see happen. And, and as we're nearing the end of this legislative session, I don't know that uh, that we're going to be able to see any added money to it. Uh, the governor is not willing to uh, come across and, and give one-time money, which does not, you know, I agree with him, that doesn't make sense uh -huh. to give one-time funding, that next year or two years from now, we'd have to come back and say, okay, now we don't have any money anymore. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I, I would agree with the governor in that regard. And at this point in time, it doesn't look like there's a lot of money out there to be found to, to do anything at this point in time. So I've tried to tell teachers to be realistic that we would like to do something, but not to get their hopes up. And that's uh, one of those things that is forthcoming. Uh, there's a bill that's still in the House, but it's, it's going to be a slam dunk. But we're making some changes in the end of course assessments. Uh, we're, we're not, uh, we're, we know that we're facing a perfect storm just very shortly about uh, if you didn't pass your uh, end of course test that you couldn't graduate. Uh -huh. So we're making some modifications to that. It's going to actually bring forth less testing in that regard and do away with the requirement that they, uh, the students are not going to be able to graduate if they don't pass their test. We had these uh, end of course assessments, you know, that they had to pass in, in certain fields in order to, to graduate. We had the test scores set high on that and things of that sort. And so uh, uh, 
Representative Abernathy is the lead sponsor of this legislation, but it's being co-sponsored by almost everyone in the, in the uh -huh. education committees in both houses. Uh, that will uh, kind of bring some relief. I know our school superintendents and school administrators were very concerned about that issue, and very well so, because it could have been a, a really a disaster if 50 or 60 percent of our seniors couldn't graduate. Mm -hmm. 